welcome to praja news now we have with us dr balachandra kango the central secretary member of communist party of india with us the central secretary member of uh, communist party of india came here to address some andhra bank employees union training classes so we will ask him some um, problems and bank employees problems and not only that the debts and um, how the reserve bank is uh, going to be corrupted and what about the bailouts lacks of proofs bail out to the multinational um, this thing and uh, uh, this um, vijay malya's escape from india and choksis and nero modi's and uh, dif on different problems we'll discuss with our uh, kango uh, kango garu namaste namaskar thank you for coming to the prajanis it's my pleasure so here sir you came here to address some andhra bank employees union uh, meeting yes of course uh, before asking other questions then i would uh, like to ask you about the uh, banking sector particularly in india you see uh, now the after demonetization lot of problems are coming up and uh, government could not able to disclose even uh, this black money but now nirav modi and uh, vijay choksi or vijay malyas bankrupts and all everything how banks are going to survive in india see the banking sector in india is undergoing a tremendous pressure yeah the pressure is partly because of the crony capitalism policies pursued by the various governments in the country and at the same time the economic situation is not very good and the economy is under stress and that also is affecting the banking industry and its capacity to recover loan is badly affected yes so these banks are under stress because of these two major, major factors and the third factor is there is a tremendous pressure on the government by the private capitalist mm. to privatize the bank because they want to use resource mobilization of the common man yeah. for their profit yeah the general principle of late has been profit for the private and losses for the public that mm. seems to be the rule and banks are all, and the government is also following the same and therefore privatization of bank is on the agenda of the government but that cannot be done because it has so public sector has its own strength and we we have been protected during the crisis of 2008 because of the strong public sector banking that we had and second thing there is a big social need for social banking in india mm. in spite of the spread of the of nationalized bank in the various areas not more than 70000 branches are there and still many of the indian villages are deprived of any branches mm -hmm. even in city certain areas are without branches yes so that means the people are not effectively served by the banks and their requirements of capital requirements are not fulfilled yes sir so on one hand there is a pressure particularly in the farm sector what we are seeing that more and more farmers are in spite of loan waivers from the government hmm. are dependent on the private lenders yeah because public That's sector true. banks are unable to finance the farmers effectively and that is a big challenge that we have and therefore in the banking sector we are lot we have seen lot of churning going on hmm. the technology also is a challenge because new technology is being used which is replacing the human being mm -hmm. and uh, outsourcing is being done to reduce the cost yes and therefore contractualization of the labor is also increased and therefore lot of uh, post in the banks are the uh, line vacant and the unions are fighting for it unions are fighting for recruitment unions are fighting for effective utilization of manpower and unions are also fighting for recovery of the bad loans so all these things struggle mm -hmm. is going on but unfortunately the government under the pressure of the corporate world is devising various policies which will not strengthen the banks but which will help in the long run the corporate loot of the banks yeah the recent npa process of npa recovery previously out of the bank profits about 16 to 18% money was supposed to be used for adjustment against the npa mm -hmm. after this government come this npa uh, quantum has been increased from 18 to 26% to 27% right so therefore if you see that the capital capitalists who have looted the bank got an help of almost 3 lakh 14 thousand to 3 lakh 15 thousand crores mm. from the modi government as bank as loan waiver mm -hmm. so on one hand you are refusing loan waivers to the farmers who are committing suicide saying that is a bad practice but on other hand you are Uh, bailing out uh, bailing out the capitalist yes yes second thing in order to recover the money and from, from the uh, and to expedite the sale of the assets bank they have come up with bankruptcy code and other procedures mm. 
Now we one must welcome it because the uh, recovery of loan is very important. But at the same time, banks are hit in two ways. On one hand, they are being asked to use their profit to adjust NPS. Hmm. At the same time, while settling the dues in under the uh, code under the bankruptcy code. Banks are asked to lose money. They are, they are supposed to take haircut. Yeah. Or recently there was a case in which thirty thousand crores were to be recovered by the bank, and uh, Reliance came forward with a proposal that they will pay only three thousand to four thousand crores, and the banks were asked to accept that kind of a proposal. It was refused. Seventy-two percent. They did not get the expected seventy-two percent vote. So the case went back to the Modi government, and what Modi government did instead of supporting the bank. Mm. They have changed the law now. Since seventy-two percent requirement has been brought down to sixty-seven percent. Mm. So in the next meeting, I think the proposal will be accepted, mm. and that means instead of thirty thousand crores, banks will get only three to four thousand crore. That means eighty-four percent haircut will have to be taken by the bank. Banks. And this is crony capitalism. This is how the present government is helping the capitalists to loot the nation. Mm. First, they loot the bank and create NPAs, and then through bankruptcy court. They again purchase the same assets at a lower cost, and in the in the bargain, people and the banks are losing. Yes, sir. So this is one. Second thing, in order to divert attention, the banks are in losses. Government is going for a merger in a big way. Hmm. Recently, four state bank employees, state banks were merged with State Bank of India, and now the net result, as per the answer given by the minister in the parliament, seven thousand branches, that means thirty thousand branches are closed down. So hmm. that means. The people are suffer suffering. Seven thousand yes. banks, the customers in seven thousand banks, are now have to run here and there and uh, accept whatever services that are available. Mm -hmm. So, uh, similarly, now the merger has been after the strike of twenty sixth against the merger, mm -hmm. Vijaya Bank, Baroda Bank, and Dena Bank merger has been approved by the government. So, government is showing that it is vindicative. It is not listening to the workers' demand, and at the same time. Doing merger so that the as the value of the public sector shares would go up, mm. and government will get money by privatizing them. Mm. So government plans to so we to have a larger bank with greater capital so that the value of the shares increases, and government can get money out of it mm. rather than strengthening the economy and the common man. Mm. So this seems to be the ploy, yeah. and therefore ALDA and as well as left parties are opposing this kind of policies of the government. Yes. But but now uh, in social media we used to see that a lot of comments on the bank employees, particularly when Nero Modi's case was uh, there, that uh, duping the banks, which particularly that uh, private bank. At the time they commented like uh, that because of the unions, that is particularly left unions, they supported the officers. That is the reason that is happened. See, one must understand that the, the giving of such big loans is a policy decision in which the unions are never involved. Never involved. Understand. But public doesn't know that. No, no, uh, yeah, see, it's. The law <laughs> has been in order to attack the public sector. You have to first attack the public sector employees. Yes. See, basically, when structural adjustment program came, what was the philosophy? Philosophy was that the unions are strong, and because unions are strong, workers do not work, and they demand more money, and therefore inflation increases. Mm. Therefore, if you want to reduce inflation. First of all, you curb the power of the trade unions to change labor laws, make labor chiefs take away their power, and privatize the public sector. So that has been therefore in order to divert the attention of the people from real culprits, and at the same time to confuse the issues. Public sector, uh, public sector banks, ideology, and the trade unions, which have strongly supported the public sector and worked effectively to make it a success, are are targeted. Yes, naturally. Are targeted. Yes, yes, and uh, regarding the national strikes of that, which is going to be happened on the eighth and ninth. This is a very important strike. Normally, workers are. This is this is fourth strike, I think, after Modi's yes, government. Absolutely, it is the fourth strike after Modi's government. But this has after the advent of the new economic policy. I think the unions are coming together and trying to defend the interest of the working class. Mm -hmm. So this is the ongoing process, which has been act, which has now been accelerated by Modi government because of its pro pro corporate strand. Mm -hmm. They have. Uh, Tried to attack working class directly by modifying number of laws mm -hmm. at state level and at the center level, mm -hmm. and therefore there is now, as at the same time they are devising very methods to help to reduce the wages of the workers mm -hmm. and to help the corporate world by fi finding out schemes like NEEM, in which numbers of people are employed who are not called as workers, they are given six thousand, seven thousand rupees, and are supposed to do work of all the 
permanent workers. Permanent workers doing. And so in nowadays, as per the survey, more than 30, 70% percent workers in most of the manufacturing units are temporary or permanent or contract workers or yeah. premium workers. And therefore, the salary of the workers and the wages of the workers are continuously coming down. Yeah. And the profits of the multinational as well as Indian corporates are on the rise. And that is a there is a stagnation in wages as per the survey done by CMI and other things. So there is no way employment growth. There is a way stagnation of wages. The real wages are not increasing, and uh, that has put the economy under strain. Yeah. So now, how you do you see this FDI sir? Even FDI, uh, they are welcoming even in the defence sector also. See, there are three things about FDI. One must see the foreign capital. If it comes with technology, it certainly would help in the long run. But in India, the foreign capital that is coming does not necessarily come through new technology. Mm. Most of the capital, for example, Amazon came and purchased Indian Flipkart for 16 billion rupees. Now this is a huge amount. Yeah. But what kind of technology they have brought in? Nothing. So acquisition and merger is one of the methods by which the assets in the your your property and assets in the in the nation are being purchased by foreign companies. So that is one. Second thing, many foreign companies come with an interest to exploit the natural resources. Hmm. In the company, in the like coal, steel, electricity, yes. and others, they did not necessarily develop the infrastructure for the benefit of the Indian people. So, and the money sometimes is inv inv invested into only share capitals. Mm. It is called as a short-term capital flight. Mm. The people invest, the share market goes up. They sell the shares, earn money, and run away. So, if you if, if you feel today it is being claimed that India is the hot hottest destination for FDI, one can always also claim that India is the place from where the hot lot of money is going out mm -hmm. so it is one of the hottest destination mm -hmm. to take money to take out, money out. To short term money so these are the two areas of concerns as mm -hmm. far as the foreign yes, yes, direct yes. investment is concerned and the third area is definitely a welcome area where the technology is being brought in and where employment generation takes place but this is very small amount when compared to the total amount that is coming and the total impact of this it is a very marginal mm -hmm. Negligible, I can say. What about the make in India? How do you feel about it? It's linked with the We are FBI. talking about the defense. See, all over the world, defense is an area where a lot of investment in technology is being taking place. Mm. And defense is the area where huge amounts are being spread, spent. Mm. So naturally, when this government came and declared its ambitious plan to modernize the military, naturally huge amounts were promised. Now, Indian capitalists have become very strong. They feel that why shouldn't we get the share out of it? And therefore, they compel government to come out with a policy of yes. uh, privatizing the defense sector. No, and the bargain, the existing defense industry has been closed down. And the new industries are coming up, which would share the profit. Personally, if the new technology comes, Indian defense becomes strong, nobody should go to have an objection. Yes. But this has a long-term implication. Mm. If profit becomes an important motive in defense industry, it starts influencing your foreign policy. It makes you aggressive, you know, in, in defense purchases as well as the defense policy. Mm -hmm. Because that serves the purpose of the people who are investing in defense. Yeah. Unless there is a war or threat of war, they would not earn money. So therefore, they would encourage the parties and the foreign policy, which will be a policy of war mongering. No. And that is the danger. That is the danger that India's foreign policy will be permanently changed because of the private interests that are being generated by Modi government in this uh, in defense industry. Yes, sir. Then Rafael? <laughs> Rafael is an interesting, very interesting and important examination. Delhi is taking new I turns. I don't want to get, uh, go into the nitty gritty of the whole thing, but there are certain questions we, as a common man, we would like Prime Minister and the Defense Minister to answer. The questions are very simple. First question is, Hindustan Aeronautic Limited is a proven company with credibility experienced, experienced. experienced, who has a long history of producing good aircraft for Indian military. Yeah. Mirage, Suzuki, I mean Sukhoi, as well as MiG airplanes, yes. Nat, Ajit, and so many planes have been manufactured. And they were in negotiations with Default, that is the owner of the Rafael. And in 2015, it was said that 95% of agreement is complete. Hmm. Suddenly our Prime Minister goes there and Hal is just kicked out of the agreement and a new company which was just formed 10 days back which does not have a property which does not have an experience of preparing or producing even a small nail forget about the plane 
he suddenly becomes a very attractive proposition for the NASA and they sign the settlement. So this is a question which people are asking that why HL was removed from the agreement. Who, who said that? Who compelled it? On the record, the trade, French trade unions are on the record. <coughs> when they question why HL is not in the mm. part of the agreement, the Dassault chairman is on the board saying that if they would have insisted on HL, then they would not have a Rafale contract. That is what precisely the French president, president said, said it, yeah. that the choice of Ambani factory was done by the Prime Minister. Yes. This is an accusation which the Prime Minister has to answer, which he is not answering. Second question which comes immediately to mind is that when the questions were asked about Rafael in the parliament, the, then the state minister, Mr. Bhamre, replied that the cost of the plane was 670 crores. Yes. And it contains the all the armaments and other conditions which were previously there in the UPA agreement. And now suddenly we are told that 1600 rupees is the cost of the flight. Of the flight. Why this? Who, who took this decision of increasing the flight? Thirdly, the negotiation was for 126 plane and suddenly agreement is only for 36 plane. Who took this decision mm. of reducing the requirement from 126 to 36? Increasing the price. And increasing the price. These are the questions which common man is asking which mm. should be answered. And unfortunately, the debate takes place on who is Chor, who is Ma Chor, who has taken money in Beaufort and Agastra deal. Yeah, we don't mind debating those, but this, this cannot be related. Rafael is a different issue. There are certain pertinent questions which he raised and government has to answer it. Government's defense is that Supreme Court has given it a clean mm. Now, this is an, another false propaganda. Yes. What has Supreme Court said? Supreme Court has said that the government has given them some information. On the basis of that information, they say that it is not their jurisdiction to discuss about price. That's all. But now government is on the record saying that the inter information given to Supreme Court was defective. Now, on the basis of defective information, if you give a judgment, naturally the judgment also becomes defective. defective. And that is the logic. Therefore, Supreme Court cannot be used as a shield by the government, which has been mm. unfortunately done to dupe the common people. Yeah. See, ultimately in a democracy, parliament is the supreme body. Mm. And if you are scared of ans answering questions in the supreme to the supreme body, Definitely, people would suspect that there is a Golmal and therefore, yes. the accusation is there that in Rafael, Golmal has taken place to help Prime Minister's friend and that is what Sony nice capitalism is about. Yes. So, lastly, um, that, uh, Dr. Kango, then regarding the Shabarimala issue, now it became a very hot topic, hot issue also. See, Shabarimala issue has evolved because initially, the Kerala High Court had upheld the tradition of not allowing women between mm. the age of 10 to 50 for in the in Ayapas Mandir. But subsequently some people went to Supreme Court and Supreme Court ruled out that as per the Indian constitution there has to be a gender equality and there is no scientific logical basis for not allowing women for 10 to 50 years yeah. from not taking darshan. Mm. And therefore they ordered the Kerala government that those women who want to make darshan, it is the government's duty to see that they are facilitated. Yes. And that is what the government of Kerala is doing, implementing the Supreme Court order. Right. Now, when Supreme Court order is to be implemented, the BJP RSS sort thought it is an opportunity for them to play emotional feelings of the people and to use tradition to attack the left government in which they have been trying to do last since last 70 years but never succeeded yeah. and they saw an opportunity in it and therefore their president Amit Shah went to the extent of threatening the Supreme Court saying that Supreme Court should give judgment only which could be implemented. Now this is the most funniest part mm -hmm. of the thing. See Supreme Court they can never consider whether the judgment is implementable or not. They have to give judgment on the basis of the constitution as a law and on the basis of the facts. facts. Whether that and two, it is the duty of the elected government to implement the decision. Decision, that's it, it can it, if government cannot implement, it is government's failure. Yeah, actually, in and fact, therefore, but to, if the president of the ruling party is threatening the Supreme Court, that itself shows that the politics that BJP is being played, they are playing a diabolical game. In Delhi, they want to show that they are a very progressive party. They are yeah. for gender equality. Therefore, they will not say anything. But in Kerala, they will go and create ruckus and create hangama, uh, create violence in, in, and create a problem. In Maharashtra also, when uh, this Sanishinganapur was opened, then they, they, they never... BJP yes. group of BJP workers 
stood at the gate and tried to stop, but Maharashtra women were very strong. They insisted and all political parties in Maharashtra supported them. And therefore, we see in Maharashtra, they could not succeed in doing that. But at the same time, one must not forget in the Maharashtra, it was their government within existence. So if any escalation of violence, any escalation of things would have put their government in the dock, which BJP did not want. Yes. But here in Kerala, they thought it is a godsend opportunity for them. And therefore, they are using this. North uh, Ayodhya and, and uh, here, uh, this is Shabarimal, South. They tried to use Ayodhya for so many years. And they are still trying to use Ayodhya. North but side. the limitations of Ayodhya issue are becoming clear. And therefore, now they thought that this is the time to enter Kerala. Particularly in South South area, South area, South it's, it's... Therefore, they are doing it. Yeah. So, people should under Indian people should understand yeah. that there are three issues involved. One is, there is no question of purity and impurity as far as the women's menstrual cycle is concerned. It is a natural phenomenon. And if somebody says that a woman during menstrual period becomes impure, I think he is talking rubbish, he is talking unscientific and no Indian who is committed to Indian constitution will support this kind of an idea. Yes. So, a left does not support this kind of an idea. We are from women equality. The second question which is being raised and which is a very fundamental question that when the principle of constitution and the traditions are in conflict with each other, who should prevail? Yeah. The, the law is very clear, it is the constitution which should prevail. Mm. But at the same time, the constitution also gives a chance to the majority to modify the law, which was done, for example, in the case of Triple Talaq. Hmm. In Triple Talaq, the Supreme Court has already declared that Triple Talaq is illegal. So there was no necessity for government to pass a law. But government saw a, a political opportunity there. And therefore, in hurry to show that they are doing a great work for Muslim women, therefore they come, came out with an ordinance. Now here, Prime, when the Prime Minister said that in Sabri Mala, it is a question of faith against the law. And if Prime Minister and his party is for faith, it is their, it is their duty to come out with an uh, ordinance in the, par in the parliament. That's all. It's but very if easy. they come with an ordinance in the parliament, the Indian people would know the real character, double speak and character of the BJP. And they would get exposed. Therefore, not they are keeping mum in Delhi and creating all the hangama in Triyantapuram yes, yes. and creating violence and creating law and order yes. problem because they are waiting for an opportunity that if violence escalate, they can use that as an excuse to bring back the bring down the left government. Yes. But unfortunately, that is not likely to happen. Kerala people have, are seeing through this game, yes, yes, and yes. that's why uh, the people are controlled in their reaction. Yes. So, thank you very much, Dr. Kangudan. Thanks for coming. Thanks for your valuable suggestions and uh, opinions. Thank you very much.